Hi guys, this is Paul with Tweak Town. We're here at Flash Memory Summit 2014. I'm sitting down with Joe O'Hare from Everspin. And what we're talking about today is some of the new advances that you guys have experienced in MRAM. I always have kind of found it fascinating that there's so many big corporations that have invested so much money yes. in R&D and development, yet no one is delivering a product besides you. So tell us a little bit about what's been going on with Everspin. All right, well, Paul, thank you very much. And, and you're right, there is a very big investment going on in the industry. And from what we see, a growing investment being viewed as one of the emerging technologies that is going to actually contend as a very viable, cost-effective memory solution and storage solution for the future. But the good news with Everspin is, is that we think we're delivering that now. And Absolutely. in fact, uh, here at the Flash Memory Summit, we've had a very good opportunity to talk about our products uh, and also, even more importantly, some customers that are using these products and pushing us to ramp it to production. So uh, what has happened this week for us most recently is that we have told the world that we are starting the ramp of our 64 megabit DDR3 Spin Torque MRAM. And I'm very happy to be able to, to say that here with you and to the audience because that is a first. It's the first commercial product for uh, Spin Torque MRAM and it complements the, the very strong, robust business we've had shipping MRAM products now for over eight years, uh, but that has been more in the static RAM, uh, embedded computing, embedded application space. So yeah. now you're seeing some more development and kind of the ecosystem emerging and you're starting to actually use it in real world applications. What are some of the benefits of MRAM compared to other solutions? Very good, yeah, well the, the biggest value that we are really showing to customers and that they are really latching onto is the fact that really for the first time they now have RAM-like performance and endurance with persistence. It's non-volatile. So when you so, lose power, your data is there. When you lose power and you bring power back, the data is there ready to go. And uh, for enterprise storage applications where you know that very statement is very fundamental to the reliability of the systems, uh, that's a key thing. And uh, they're able to accomplish that task today, but it's fairly complicated. It is a little bit costly in some cases, but also uh, uh, probably not as quite as reliable as they'd like it to be by using supercapacitors or perhaps batteries to back up or give enough energy time to write from the RAM to a NAND or an HDD device to where it's permanently committed. With MRAM, spin torque MRAM and the DDR3 interface, the moment you write it, it's inherently committed and non-volatile and that data is protected. So, so multiple that, benefits. Yeah. So that can kind of relieve some of the other infrastructure inside the data center. And on top of that, it should simplify design because wouldn't it be easier to use a non-persistent, or a, excuse me, a persistent a, memory? A persistent memory, yeah, it is. Uh, so, uh, you know, the way that things are working now today, there's quite a bit of software that's involved at the moment a power loss is detected. Yeah. Uh, there's quite a scramble that goes on in the system. I won't call it a panic, you know, but but really there's, there's a, a lot of activity, a lot of steps in the process that have to go through to make sure you capture that data. And again, with it being inherently uh, non-volatile, that problem basically goes away. So, so that's a great simplification uh, from a system design standpoint. And you can use this as a cash front end to kind of extend other technologies or work complementary and actually make them better, correct? That's exactly right. Our, our real target with this technology in its current products and, and for the near-term products coming in the future is right at these data storage applications. So whether it be caching in RAID systems or perhaps write caching or data buffering in these very large flash-based SSDs uh, where a very similar function takes place. The benefit of having what you've last written permanently stored and protected uh, but happening at the speeds of DDR3, which is one of the fastest memory interfaces that we've got available in, a, in the technology today. Both of those combined to, to really make this a, a very attractive solution and of great benefit to our customers. So the, the market force kind of growing, MRAM is maturing. You guys have obviously got it down and you're continuing down that density path. Yes. How long do you think it will be or what kind of density increases will we need to look at until we see an inflection point for mass adoption? 
Yeah, thank you for asking that because that actually is the promise and why, to, back to our first point about so much investment going on in this technology because it's very scalable. So uh, for us at, at Everspin, we started out with a 90 nanometer technology building the first commercial product, fairly conservative from a memory technology standpoint. So mm -hmm. the good news is, is that as we scale that down to say 40 nanometers, 28 nanometers and below, uh, the density increases are gonna scale proportionally with that. So we've got a, you know, a 256 megabit chip that is in design now, which will be our next introduction and uh, from what we see, getting to gigabit densities in the next, next couple of years is very achievable. And uh, we see that, and I think some others are seeing that as well, where you see the bigger memory suppliers now paying attention to that and thinking about uh, spin torque MRAM perhaps as uh, either a replacement to DRAM in the future, or uh, if not a complement to it, but one that also drives us a, a very large market opportunity. So uh, we, in fact, uh, you know, by pioneering this and blazing the trail uh, and, and really getting an expectation out there from customers that this can happen, uh, would welcome you know, additional supply out in the future when this gets really big. Uh, but for now, being the only supplier, you know, what we've got to do is concentrate on ramping up the production now of the parts, because uh, I'm happy to also tell you that we've got a couple of customers that have actually put this in systems, designed it in, and have announced their products with Everspin, and that has happened here very recently. Well, that's good news. I mean, yeah. it's good to hear great things are continuing to happen at Everspin, and we always enjoy catching up with you guys. Thanks for stopping by the booth. Well, Thanks. thank you, Paul. Thank you.